Good morning. Good morning and welcome. I am the Reverend Diane Daugert. My pronouns are she, her, and it is my pleasure to serve as your developmental lead minister here at the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Nashville, where we nurture spiritual growth, create community, and act on our values. I extend a special welcome to any of you who may be here for the first time. We are glad to share this time of worship with everyone. If you're joining us live on Zoom this morning, please let us know that you are here by sending us your greetings in the chat. Whatever platform you are using to view this service, we hope you will find something here that inspires you, lifts your spirits, nourishes your soul, and restores your faith in the goodness of life. If you'd like to learn more about Unitarian Universalism or how to become more engaged with the life of this congregation, I invite you to reach out to us. You can find our contact information on the church website. Today's service is dedicated to healing. Today we commemorate a year of loss, fear, isolation, and uncertainty. A year when we have also discovered the resilience of the human spirit. Through story, song, and ritual, we make a sacred space where our brokenness is offered up to be healed a sacred space where we feel the blessings of hope and resilience when we open our hearts to each other. Good morning. My name is Elaine Bailey Free and my pronouns are she, her. I'm co-chair of the worship committee, and today I'm filling in for Jay Tiefenbrunn, our director of music ministry. Our first hymn is Carry the Flame. When COVID-19 became a global pandemic, few of us imagined it would last as long as it has, or that the losses would be so great. UU Minister Dan Schatz wrote this song about how we have managed to keep going, carry the flame, and create our own hope. Please join in singing, Carry the Flame. that you could do was carry the flame sickness spreading through the land you held your spirit in your hands and carried the flame When storms and sorrows gathered round, you raised your head and you stayed your ground. You carried the flame through endless days of the hardest living. You kept on loving, kept on giving. You kept on and carried the flame. The flame, raise it high, send its beacon through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it grow, let it light the world you know, let it glow, carry the flame. And when the day is done at last, 
We take on the spark you passed And carry the flame To hand we send it on The kindling hope of a rising dawn In a song we carry the flame flame, raise it high, send its beacon through the sky, keep it strong, and shining through the pain, let it rise and let it grow, let it light the world you know, let it glow. Our nurses, doctors, teachers, we are children, parents, preachers, and we all carry the flame. We are scientists and cargo packers, farmers, singers, grocery stackers, young and old, we carry the flame. Carry the flame, raise it high, send its beacon through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it grow, let it light the world you know, let it glow. Carry the flame. Let it glow. The words for the call to worship were written by Catherine Hawk herself. Come burdened, come savvy, Come aging, come discouraged, come wanting, come fall, come longing, come drifting, come, come, let us worship. The words for the chalice lighting were written by Brian Kiley. In times of darkness, we stumble towards the tiny flame. In times of cold, we seek the warming fire. In times of repression, we seek for the lamp of truth. In times of loss, we pray for the comforting light. In times of joy, we light a candle of celebration. Spirit of life, as we kindle this, this light, help us find what we need this day. Today's story is titled The Healing Wizard. It happens to be a product of my imagination. It was given to me one night in a dream. Chelsea Henry and Chaz Sisk are here to help me tell the story. Once upon a time, there lived a wizard whose superpower was healing. The wizard was really good at helping people to heal. Some people called the wizard spirit of life, but the wizard preferred to simply be called Wiz. Even though no one had ever seen Wiz, no one questioned that Wiz existed, but sometimes people would forget. 
It came to pass that a difficult time fell on the land, a fog of difficulty so heavy and dense that the people could no longer see each other. As time went on and the fog didn't lift, the people became lonely and sad and a little bit frightened. Wiz wondered what to do, wondered how to help the people heal their loneliness and sadness and fear. So gathering up a magic bag filled with ritual objects, candles, stones, and seeds, Wiz set off to help. The first thing Wiz did was to drop candles all over the land. One landed in the lap of a young man. Startled, the young man picked it up. Something familiar stirred within him. He remembered a time not long ago when people would gather to light candles. Fumbling around, he found a match and lit the candle. The light and warmth from the candle made a small opening in the thick cloud, enough so that he could make out the outline of his neighbor's face, face a kindly older woman that he had been worried about. The young man reached out with his candle. Seeing the light, the woman reached out and lit her candle from its flame. People all over the land were lighting their candles the very same way, carrying the flame from one candle to the next, one neighbor to another. The fog was still there, but at least now the people could see each other. They could also see that their once lush land had turned barren and stony. Making their way to the lake where they used to gather would now be treacherous. The people felt as isolated as ever. So Wiz reached into the magic bag and dropped a large stone into the lake. People heard the stone go kerplunk and saw ripples spread across the surface of the water. Soon there was another kerplunk. This time from a stone, one of, the, one of the people had thrown into the lake while shouting, I'm so angry this cloud of difficulty has come to our land. Then another kerplunk. I'm so disappointed I can't be with my friends. Then another. And I can't be with my grandchildren. And another. I can't be with my aging parents. And another kerplunk and a quiet voice. I'm afraid of what will happen to me. And another, my cousin died and I miss them. As the people dropped stone after stone into the lake, naming their sorrows of grief and sadness and loneliness, Wiz reached into the magic bag again, this time sprinkling seeds all over the barren land. Then the real magic began to happen. The people began to weep. Tears they had been holding back fell from their eyes, watering the barren ground, making it soft. Soon the seeds sprouted and grew, making the land lush once again. The people made their way toward the lake and toward each other, cautiously carrying the candles because the fog of difficulty was still there, lighter and less dense, but still there, as a reminder of all they had been through and all the ways they had grown and changed. And the people remembered. They remembered the healing wizard, the spirit of life, the healing magic that is always present in our lives. Here ends the story. Good morning. I'm David Haas and I'm a member of this congregation. I've been asked uh, to say a few words about stewardship. Uh, I give to this church in part because I've received so much from this church. I have gotten to know lots of people. The UU principles inform my view of the world. Our annual rituals reinforce a sense of community. My family and friends who are not members visit on occasion to share special occasions with me and I've tasted Sarah Plummer's amazing persimmon pudding. I could go on and on about these things and other things, but instead I'll say a few words about one thing, music. 
Ever since I was in the fourth grade, I planned to be a high school music teacher. Through an odd turn of events, things did not work out. So while I was at, at uh, Indiana University, I changed my plan and decided to become a physician. I came to Vanderbilt 42 years ago to attend medical school and have been here ever since. For many years, music was on the back burner. Uh, many years later, the spark was rekindled as I followed and supported the careers of two singer-songwriters, uh, my unofficial daughter, Ruby Amonfu, and my official daughter, Anna Haas, who may have gone into labor today, and also their many singer-songwriter friends. I've been to more singer-songwriter shows than you could possibly imagine. About 15 years ago, I joined this church by accident. I was not seeking a spiritual home, but rather a place where my son Daniel could get a letter from a preacher so he could become an Eagle Scout. While Daniel attended RE, I attended services and eventually joined the choir. I hadn't sung in a choir since I was in high school. Because of choir, I stayed on even after Daniel left for college. It's been great both singing and for the fellowship that comes with being in choir. At some point, I started thinking about how some UU songs are based on UU principles. So I decided to try to write one. In my entire life, I had only ever written a handful of songs and I had never written one with voice parts. About three years ago, I met with our choir director, Jay Tiefenbrunn, to share vocal parts for a song that was only in my head that was called Inherent Worth and Dignity. I thought she could easily translate this into sheet music that we could sing. Um, little did I know that was the start of an ongoing collaboration, a highlight of which was Music Sunday in 2008 when our choir premiered seven songs, one for each principal. Our choir made this possible, patiently working through each rewrite after rewrite to make each song even better. It was an absolute joy to perform these songs with our choir, for our congregation, with Jay conducting and with Holling on piano. For the offertory, I even got to play a piano version of one of my songs. Uh, this was a real kick since it was the first time I, I had ever played the piano in front of an audience. Uh, since then, to encourage other choirs to sing these songs, We've been working to create high quality studio recordings with help from some wonderful, wonderful friends we've gotten to know through Ruby and Anna. We've also written quite a few new songs around themes such as emotional healing, institutional racism, climate change, and our place in the cosmos. I can't wait to hear our choir sing these songs. As I said, I've received so much from this church for this and to help support its broader work in the world. I feel it's my responsibility to donate generously. Thank you for listening. We are halfway through the stewardship campaign that still need to hear from more than half of our pledging members and friends. This year's stewardship goal is $650,000 and it will take everyone who can to make a financial commitment for the upcoming fiscal year. Pledges can be made online at firstuunash.org backslash stewardship. And if you received a pledge form in the mail this week, you can fill it out and mail it to the church. We rely on your generosity to sustain our beloved church bring our values to life, and make our UU voices heard in the community. Please submit your pledge this week. If you have any questions, you can email stewardship at thefun.org. The offering is a sacrament of the free church. It is supported by the voluntary generosity of all who join with us. Our Share the Plate recipient this month is Safe Haven Family Shelter. Instructions for how to give online are on the screen and in the chat. Maybe, maybe Kendra can get them in the chat for those who are here with us live. You may also mail a check to the church. Please indicate on the memo line if your donation is for Share the Plate. Generously given 
your offerings and pledges are gratefully received. My name is Patricia Armstrong. My pronouns are she and her, and I am a 20-year member of First UU Church. When I read Reverend Diane's midweek message asking for reflections about the pandemic, I was astounded that I could not easily put into words what I felt. It is rare for me not to be able to express my feelings about anything. 
my original loss was no longer feeling even slightly invincible in the world. Loss of movement in the city, loss of many choices of how to experience daily life. The silence of the streets filled me with a mild panic and the empty shelves in the markets toyed mightily with my fears of food insecurity. I had my annual physical the second week of March, 2020. And the worst thing that my doctor said was that there was no cure known for what was coming. I went home feeling that a tsunami would be arriving and that I would just have to do the best I could and that I also might not survive if infected. Staying home felt like an easy answer that I could and would do. My children fearing for my safety enhanced my own doubts. As with any elongated anxiety spell, you tire of being fearful and stressed. You find out that in your spot of the world, not too much is different. And as the year moved on and the guidelines to do what we could do to be safe were announced, I began to feel able to do the necessary things that life called me to accomplish. The new tsunami that swept over our household was one of enormous gratitude. My husband works part-time at the Bellevue Library, and he was paid for two months while he remained at home before they reopened with some services to be available. I fully appreciated that we had these two months totally to ourselves, and in many ways, we strengthened our marriage relationship. We grew together more as, more as a team. We have a modern and comfortable home to live in safely with a neighborhood with sidewalks for exercise walking. Essentially, we had no change in our economy since all of my income and his is from pensions and social security. The horrible disruption of economic life that hit so many people smack in the middle never came to us. We watched the news and were horrified at the scenes of people dying in such numbers that they could not be immediately buried. It didn't seem real to us, and that was scary. Our life hadn't changed so materially that we felt these losses. We did not know anyone who's lost their life to COVID-19. The next thing that sets in feels like survivor's guilt since these horrible things weren't happening where we could see them ourselves. As the politics of the pandemic raged, it created a loss of truth telling of facts and that was dangerous to know. Both Jay and I have now completed our vaccinations and even my children are beginning to be vaccinated. Again, the most humble and necessary feeling is gratitude. Gratitude for the scientists, the healthcare workers, and all of the clerical delivery folks and other workers who trudged on working so I could hide out in my house and be safe. That does not make me feel brave, but rather weak while others sacrifice for all of us. What gifts they have given that will never be able to be repaid. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> We who have struggled and survived a year like no other give witness to all that came to pass over the last 12 months of pandemic. To commemorate this time, we have laid an altar with candles of loss, stones of sorrow, seeds of hope, and blossoms of growth. We light candles for those who lost their lives to COVID-19. 2,701,277 deaths worldwide. 543,481 deaths in the United States. 11,681 deaths in Tennessee. For those who were known to members of this congregation.
Bill Purcell. Jeff Lysenby. Byron Skinner. Joan Moore. Larry Beadle. Jean Schober. And for those unnamed whose memories we carry silently in our hearts. We drop stones of sorrow into healing water. Sorrow for so many losses. Loss of educational achievement. Loss of career opportunities. Loss of jobs. Loss of income, loss of the feeling of invincibility, loss of movement through the city, loss of choices, loss of structure. Loss of relationships. All the losses that come from being sick with COVID. Sorrow for all the things we didn't get to do. A proper retirement party and farewell for Reverend Gail Seedy. in-person memorial services. Child dedications. Weddings. Graduations. Vacations. Travel. Birthday parties. Holiday gatherings. Hugging our families. Going to school. Hanging out with friends. Singing together. Sorrow for all the things we felt. Fear of becoming infected and getting sick. Fear for vulnerable family members. Worry about food insecurity. Shock and grief at the enormity of the loss of life. Survivor guilt. Guilt for the sacrifices of essential workers that can never be repaid. Loneliness, 
isolation and being separated from grandchildren. We plant seeds of hope for all that got us through. New routines, new ways of being, breathing, being more present in our bodies, new information about the disease and how to be safer, gratitude for privilege and comfort, essential workers who made it possible to stay home, vaccines, resilience, perseverance. We lift up all the ways we have grown and changed with blossoms of growth. Stronger, closer relationships. More empathy. Learning self-love and forgiveness. Greater awareness of white supremacy and its impact on people of color, our economy, our country, democracy, and values. Deeper appreciation of animal companions. Deeper connection to the natural world. Greater appreciation of the importance of community. Gratitude for times of quiet and stillness. Gratitude for connections to family and friends. Deeper awareness of and appreciation for the many comforts and privileges we have. Renewed commitment to work for positive change in our world. <clears throat> Through all the loss, the sorrow, the hope, and the growth, there is a spirit moving in us and among us, the spirit of life holding us and sustaining us, may we continue to carry the flame. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chelsea and Reverend Diane. I think I really needed that. So uh, both our lovely offertory, Show Us How to Love, and our closing song, Creation of Peace, were composed by person of color, Mark Miller. Mark's dream is that he composes, performs, teaches, and what he composes, performs, teaches, and leads will inspire and empower people to create beloved community. Some of the lyrics of this song may be familiar to you from the Carolyn McDade setting of We'll Build a Land, but are revised by Mark and the lyricist in a way that makes the song sing to the heart with hope for the joy of healing and peace. As always, we invite you to sing along wherever you are. Thank you. 
The words for the chalice lighting were written by Elizabeth Sell Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again.